All right, I think we're live again. It's Dr. Boz and it's Tuesday night. So we are live on the Dr. Boz channel. And we are here from my office space in Tampa, Florida. And the next month we'll have holiday parties at work and outings with your friends, gathering with your family. That's going to pepper your calendar for the next month and test your resolve for how how well you can do keto in the next month. Stick around for the show because I'm gonna share you some of my struggles and some of the hacks and the, the, the ways I've gotten through the holidays in the past, what I plan to do for this season as well. And hopefully you'll see that there's a higher meaning to these gatherings and shift your focus away from that struggle with food. I'm Dr. Boz and we have some traditions on this show we're gonna start with and one of them is checking my numbers. So I appreciate all of you saying the sound is good because I have a brand new microphone and I feel like that is the best birthday gift ever. Uh, that I have sound that should not break ever again. <laughs> I'm gonna check my numbers with you guys. Uh, for many of you that sent me holiday uh, or birthday wishes, I turned 50 yesterday and am super thankful for my health and my children. And that, um, that day was definitely, it, it came faster than I thought 50 years should come. But uh, here's my ketones for counting down. See if you can get that in there. Yeah, there's the counting down. That takes 10 seconds and then the glucose takes five. So it usually works out to get both of them on the screen at the same time. Yeah, so ketones are 3.3, glucose is 78. I have been fasting since Sunday, but I started out with a heck of a barrier after that holiday weekend because not only was it Thanksgiving, it was also that day before my birthday. So uh, I have plenty of things to talk about. Uh, before we do that though, I am going for one more uh, review of a couple of things. So uh, number one, I have a, uh, a few things I've announced the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is that Dr. Boz website, bozmd.com. And if you go over to the store, I don't know if you can see me clicking on the store there, uh, there's a really good deal. Now, maybe I'm just, I'm super stingy, but I think somebody should totally notice that this 10 pack for $22 is the cheapest you're ever gonna see this again. And if you're looking for a truly awesome way to get through the holidays, it's to pass these out for less than a, you know, a couple dollars a piece at your holiday event saying, this is how I eat. <laughs> this is the fridge guide that I, I made a couple years ago. I have since upgraded to put the fridge guide on one side and then the keto continuum on the back. It's a really great combination. But in order to get to selling those, I needed to get rid of the last of these. So I have them at a super fire sale and I can't believe there's still some left. They are sold in 10 packs and I think after my holiday weekend, I should probably have handed them out more than I have been recently. All right, so that's stop number one. I then have some, some pouty news. Uh, here are something I usually do right now is read reviews, but here is the keto continuum and uh, I know that the last time I looked, it was 647 reviews. And just to be fair, uh, I scrolled down here and looked at the date of the last review, which was, yeah, November 20th. Um, and then I went over and said, well, maybe they've left a review on the workbook. And again, I knew the number was 177 reviews because I check all of these. <laughs> I never realized how much an author should care about this until, yeah, I was an author. <laughs> so looking at the last of these reviews, maybe. Um... I'm getting lost on my little, uh, anyway, it's 177. I can go there again. I think I had to do this. Oh, there it is. Uh, and then go to most recent. Yeah, that one came on November 17th. And the last one was any way you can. And I kind of forgot the number of this one, but when I scrolled down and looked, um, it was done on November 16th. So if you haven't gotten me a birthday gift or if you wanted to wish me well, Go write a review and just say happy birthday, <laughs> as long as there's five stars, <laughs> if you think that's what it deserves. Honestly, that is a, a huge uh, thing that I continue to ask folks for when they say, is there any way I can send thank you? Uh, I quickly hop back and say, you have no idea. I had no idea how important those reviews were until I did this game all by myself and said, 
that's a nightmare. It is really difficult. So uh, that's some of the housekeeping. We are going to talk a little bit more about a, a few other things as this goes on. And I encourage you uh, to send in some questions. Uh, this is one of the places that I answer questions. Last week when we had our guest, I didn't get to the questions at the end, but um, I think it was a really valuable um, show where we reviewed Dr. Baker's labs, uh, talked about what I would do and what he had done. Um, next week we have a couple of articles that I'm going to go through, some, some brain hacking for uh, other ways to feel, uh, just some of the things that I pay attention to, some of the articles I've been reading and a way to kind of get you into the way I think about uh, how to improve that function of the brain, uh, improve uh, it with ketones. So, uh, and then the other thing I wanted to share is tonight I am drinking uh, this Mexican chocolate spice. So my ketones were 3.3. For those of you that have watched me do this before, it's kind of hard to raise it when they're that high with a supplement because it pales in comparison when your body can make the ketones. But I did have a little coffee left from my day and I mixed um, the ketones in. I have been fasting since Monday, so I know better than to drink A, caffeine too, too late at night or I won't sleep well. But I also know better than to uh, uh, put too many ketones in. So I have a package of that, but we'll see if it raises my ketones at, by the end of the show. This is one of the thing, other traditions that I do on the show. So thank you for people checking in and the happy birthday wishes that you've just put in the chats. Uh, it was truly a, uh, a great birthday and the, the weekend over the holiday weekend was, was delightful. Uh, as many of you know, I, 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 I buried my parents this past year. So this holiday was, um, last holiday was right in the aftermath of the funeral, uh, my mother's funeral. So I don't quite <laughs> have a great memory of last Thanksgiving. I mean, I remember it, but just not thinking about some of the stuff I think about this season. Uh, so I made a, a, my first holiday meal without my f mom on the other end of the phone. And uh, that, I did a major blunder. Um, for those young cooks out there that have done this by yourself, I made a major error when I was cooking for Thanksgiving. And that is, I, we have three sons and I have a, uh, I, I call her my adopted daughter from Wuhan, China. <laughs> Uh, she was a foreign exchange student that was with our family when the pandemic hit, and she hasn't been able to go home if, because of the pandemic. So we've adopted her, and she, not in the formal sense, but we love her like we would, uh, a child. So we had six people at home, and I swear I cooked as if there was an army. I had so much food. Uh, I did a few things that were wrong, and I'm going to use those as examples about how to get through the next month of some of the hacks that I know better and I should have done better. Uh, but as I look at uh, how I got through this last holiday season and this last weekend of birthday plus uh, cooking for the first time without a phone call to my mom, uh, and then looking at <laughs> some of the mistakes I made and what I'll do a little bit better this next few weeks. So, mm. so if I look at some of the in, uh uh, the, the things I can't undo that came this last season, or this last uh, weekend for the holiday season. I was preparing this meal and I, I did what I typically do in a week, which was I fasted. Um, now fasting through Monday and Tuesday through the show has been, since we moved the show to Tuesdays, it's really been a rhythm that I've gotten into. My husband knows better than to uh, ha ask me to do anything with food on Monday night. I have a solid approach to, um, to the week, but when I knew Thanksgiving was coming, I had a little bit of a meal on Wednesday morning and then I fasted again, or just kind of didn't, I mean, I might've had some cream in my coffee, so it maybe one wasn't a perfect fast, but I got to Thursday and not only had I prepared a ton of food, uh, looking forward to the, the time with the boys being home and we like to play board games at our family, and so I wanted some, you know, the things around that the boys would like to eat, and of course then it's my birthday, and so I wanted to have a celebration for that. And you'll hear me talk about that. I I am a I am very strongly uh, keto during most of the days of the year, but there are some times that I say, you know what? Don't not live your life. Uh, food is a ve very great way that we get joy and pleasure and we celebrate together and I'll tell you when you've fasted for almost four days 
every bite <laughs> seemed to have this explosion in my head of you know energy and 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 joy and i did what i tell patients not to do which was i ate a lot <laughs> I ate a lot uh, and I had also abundantly cooked so it wasn't just a little bit here I think I ate for like 24 hours <laughs> I just kept eating which uh, did still give me nice uh, joy in the food that we had eaten but as I look towards this next holiday season and give you some of the advice that I knew better I knew what I should have done and I'll share that with you because uh, once especially if you've struggled with insulin resistance or you've struggled with uh, getting your pleasure from food as one of the main sources for pleasure, it doesn't play forward well. The, the one bite or the few bites that give you the highest amount of dopamine are the first few bites of a meal. Um, and then when you continually do like I did, which was eat a ton for a couple of days, uh, playing games and doing stuff with the boys, and again, really great food was around to eat. It turned out to be uh, quite the amount of Food and also just I didn't feel well as soon as I start to overeat um, especially with a bunch of carbs that I typically don't eat uh, I, I I knew I was also like remembering my parents and the, you know some of the grieving and the lonesomeness of not having them for that first holiday that just really um, it really struck home and my comfort I went back to something I'd used for a long time which was some food uh, as I got to the end of the weekend, and like I said, I've been fasting since Sunday, so I hadn't checked my numbers yet, but I'm quite surprised they were 3.3. 3. Um, so that is a testimony to say what happens when you stay at this the long game uh, and how much your metabolism, when it is in a, in a healthy state, can recover from those times of, uh, I would call that binging on food on a holiday season like that. Uh, but I have some strategies and I'm going to share those with you about what should you do as these holidays come up and you're thinking about office parties and, um, and knowing that getting together with friends and family and, um, and spending time together is connected with food. How can you strongly stay keto? So I've got three major points that I'd like to share with you. Number one is that there, there is a, a mentality to staying keto that is lovely when you're doing well. Um, especially when I get to the end of Tuesday and I've done a good job on my fast, I think I could fast until Friday because once that, once you're in a rhythm of feeling good, it's like, oh, I can do this, this is no problem. Um, but when you put too many temptations in front of me or anybody else, uh, especially if you've had a habit in the past of rewarding yourself with food or really enjoying food probably too much as the place of, uh, of pleasure. Uh, you want to put chemistry on your side. I'm just saying there's a lot of things you can do to say distance yourself, try not to walk past the food, you know, I don't know, wear gloves. Although there's some, there's some silly things I've seen people put up there. I'm like, no, no, no. You, you really just need to hack the chemistry. So uh, one of those chemistries is that ghrelin is one of those hormones that uh, really strikes hunger in us that when it's when it's churning um yeah <laughs> this functions of ghrelin like when people have a disorder where ghrelin is constantly high or it churns up to they eat strange things like um i won't tell you on the show because it's kind of gross they eat strange things when their ghrelin is overproduced but one of the ways to suppress the ghrelin is a dose of high fat so i'm not one to go grab a spoonful of coconut oil or I know I give people in my book a challenge of eating a stick of butter but that's not something I do I would want to do I don't think people should do uh, it's a great testimony where I give uh, when I tell people about if you want to see what it feels like to actually feel satiated eat a stick of butter uh, and you can't believe what happens to the last by the last third of that stick of butter and I go through this in the books that I've written um, but one of the places that I have learned uh, before I walk into a place where I know it's going to be tempting. Uh, my son is in high school and they have holiday parties and they have all the moms bring baked goods, which are essentially a carb, carb bombs. <laughs> There's so many carbohydrates in one bite. You're like, that's like a whole day's worth of carbs if you're keto. And so to say, how can I use chemistry on my side to not do that? 
sure you could eat a spoonful of coconut oil, but I keep a can of these in my glove box, which are the sardines I've talked about a few times. You know that there was a video a few weeks ago where I did a sardine fast. I did sardines for a week. And dang, it really is that about the third bite of a very fatty, high uh, protein meal. Um, dang, four bites of uh, a, sar a can of sardines. And I can't, I, I'm, I'm always amazed at how quickly my hunger is gone. Like the choices I make are better. And it's in, within short order, like within about 15 minutes of the first bite, I just really do a better job of not failing to a temptation. Now, if you don't like sardines, which I would challenge you to actually taste them, they just don't have a very good marketing team, but they taste pretty good. Um, the, the other way you can do that is to really eat a, a fatty meat, a fatty high protein um, meal before you leave. Um, you know, I've seen people say, well, stick to the, the cold cuts of the, of the meat trays at, at the beginning of a party. But I'll be honest, um, sometimes I can hardly find the meat tray in the crowd of all of the carbohydrates and sweets and treats. So I would arm yourself before you walk through the door, having that high fatty uh, protein, um, even just four or five bites as you like, again, I love, I love the idea of sardines because I, I have some in my glove box. I have some at home. I have some at my office. That's the only food I have at the office. <laughs> that if you're going to eat, that's a great one to break your fast on and a great one to say, I'm about to walk into a temptation nightmare. And when you eat that high fat, the ghrelin of, of hunger is suppressed. And that's why uh, that, that food, uh, even just a few bites, will suppress the 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 hunger you know people write in all the time and say how is it that people eat that eat so many calories can lose weight on the ketogenic diet and you don't have to look long to say it's in the chemistry people uh, you're right over time people on a ketogenic diet eat less amounts of food but it's because they've recruited their endocrine system or their hormonal system to suppress that hunger to suppress those urges and when you have chemistry on your side, I mean, I have met some of the most disciplined people uh, who are 100 pounds overweight. And it's because they have to be so perfect about how they choose their food when they don't have chemistry on their side, when they're insulin resistance and every morsel that goes into their body gets stored as fat. And they gain weight with hardly eating. Uh, their metabolism shuts down and they don't feel good. When you finally get into that uh, keto adapted uh, or fat adapted state part of the res part of the reward is how easily you can pull on the strings of your endocrine system to say save me from the temptations I'm about to walk into and that begins with this high fatty meat before you walk into the landmines of your holiday parties so that is number one uh, place that if you can prepare and find a way that your uh, fat delivery is high right before you walk into the temptations that will prime your endocrine system to be on your side. Now, it doesn't stop you from doing it, com you know, eating completely, but it just the satiety will win. The second thing, though, is another chemistry hack, and that has to do with if you don't have the ability to eat something high protein, how else could you boost the endocrine system in your, in your body to work for you? And the way, one of the ways that I like to do that, oh, I haven't had that in a long time. The one that's the, let's see if it wears that. Um, so <laughs> the, uh, the Mexican uh, spice one is what I'm drinking, and it has this little bit of capsaicin at the end of it, and I totally love that. So it, it's just a little bit of a kick at the end of that chocolate. It's one of my favorite things. I haven't had it in probably a year, though. <laughs> anyway, that's good. Um, so the second way that you can biohack, if you're not going to have a high-fatty meal, is to add ketones to your to your system right before you walk into an area like that. Of course, ketone supplements are just a little easier to keep around as compared to, well, I think a can of sardines is pretty easy to keep around too. But if you're looking for a, a bit of brisket or a bit of um, you know pulled pork that's in its nice fatty juices, probably not as easy to find right before you walk into the holiday party. But if you did have um, ketones and you have that liquid, what, sipping on that while you're at a party um, is an excellent way to to give yourself the chemistry set that 
suppresses appetite. Many times on this show, I've talked about how ketones, yes, they are a fuel. They come from the breakdown of, of triglycerides or, or fat, strings of fat. But ketones in supplements, when you swallow them um, or whether you make them, they are a signaling agent. That signaling agent starts with uh, the circulation of a certain number of ketones, like 0.5, you know, 0.5 gets you just into ketosis. But as you reach closer to that 1.0, that's where it's very easy to feel the suppression of your appetite. As I fast every week, I can almost tell you when my ketones bump up to at least above a 1.0 because I just don't have hunger. And that isn't because I, you know, my my stomach gives up and just says, oh, she's never going to eat. And that's not true. I love to eat. I like, I love food. Uh, but the suppression of your appetite is a chemistry equation that is in part regulated by how high those ketones are. So today, ketones are 3.3. You're right. I don't have hunger right now. And it's because of my chemistry set, the, the, the chemistry in my body, that biochemistry. Uh, so that is another way to do this. I have actually uh, been known to, in the, in the last couple of parties that I've gone to where I didn't want to drink uh, uh, too much and I didn't want to fall off the wagon. I just don't like the way my brain works the next day. I don't like it when I overeat on, on carbohydrates or alcohol. And I had, um, I mixed my ketones. I actually did the strawberry lemonade, which has ketones and a little bit of uh, MCT. So it's got some fat in it. It really tastes good. And I added the hard liquor to my drink. And so I could sip on this while suppressing my appetite. And I just did such a better job of really not having my brain focus on the food. Um, because we've all done that. It's the holidays. And just like over my weekend, I was like, oh, it's the one time a year that I get to have this. And it's the one time a year I get to make this. And okay, it's just not that exciting of a moment. Uh, there are much greater moments that... Um, that I do, that I do focus on, which which brings me to the heart of what I really have learned in in the several years of, you know, teaching ketogenic uh, diets, but really working with people who who do s focus on the wrong areas, um, and that is whether it, your addiction is sex, drugs, rock and roll, uh, or carbohydrates. Uh, when you watch how we shift from a, a place where our brain just keeps going back to something we crave into a, a season of life where you have found joy in other areas. Um, I, think, I think the best example of, of teaching this is, well, I'm, I might have been a little manipulative. Uh, so I'm a mother of three boys and I have been known to, uh, to outsmart them. They're not watching right now, so I have no doubt that they're not gonna hear, they're not gonna hear this, <laughs> but. I really do work at saying, as a mom of young boys, I could, I was probably more like a sergeant and I could just tell them what to do and they listened. But then this thing called puberty comes along and it's when they really need to know some things that I want to take the lessons I've learned about addiction and, and helping, uh, you know, grow the, a patient from a desperate area of their life and saying it could have been prevented had they known this. And if you've ever listened to your mother lecture to you, you can about imagine how well my children like this. They don't. And so I listened to my husband and said, shut up, <laughs> don't do it that way. And I manipulated them into something that I now am offering. Uh, I, I've actually transitioned from just offering it to a few people to more. So this uh, story starts out in the jail of a community that was struggling with addiction. And although uh, the intentions were that as a physician, I would go in and see the inmates as patients, between politics and paperwork, uh, when I was there, I, we didn't have permission to do that. So I have this unique opportunity where I was in a jail, uh, in a community that was plagued with addiction. And I mean, plagued, 40% of the people were addicted to alcohol. That's 40% of your teachers, 40% of your preachers, 40% of your policemen, 40% of your judges, 40% of, uh, of, your, of your people delivering your groceries. The, the community had a 40% alcohol rate. And inside their jail, I mean, well, way more than 40% struggled with alcohol. 
So knowing this was one of my uh, things that I was pretty well educated on, I was frustrated that I couldn't see the patients while I was there and decided, well, let's just turn this into an educational process and I'll put on a little uh, education. They really need to understand some of these things. So I went from the, I wasn't their mother, I was in a you know white coat and a stethoscope, but I, I realized there was a lot to what they were struggling with that I had taught my children and I had taught patients for the last 10 or 15 years. And at first it started out as a three or four hour workshop. Uh, then it grew to a six or seven hour workshop. Uh, and as I started to t teach these inmates about struggling with their brains, how would you shut down your brain when, you, um, when you're worried about something, when you're craving something? Um, and then how do you focus off of something that's an obsession? Uh, which is really when, when you study people who truly are having troubles at the holidays, uh, it's because they've not just struggled during the holidays, they struggled during their life. And you can course correct that with some behaviors, but not in a day, not in a, an overnight flash of, yes, I can biohack your ghrelin and suppress it with some fatty meat. I can put some ketones in your circulation and suppress your appetite. But if you're truly looking for how do you transition from having a struggle, a returning struggle in your life uh, of addiction, uh, of obsessions, that they, they derail the, the purpose behind what, what a holiday gathering is for. And that is to connect with people. Uh, there was no better place for me to see that than in this jail in, on, a, on a reservation in South Dakota. And the first few uh, seminars, I really just kind of honed in, how do I talk in a language that they can connect with? And then I practiced the modules a few more, and we're still waiting on politics and paperwork to get to be able to see them as patients. And we actually never did get that done. What I did, I think this was God's way of reminding me, what are you good at? I did transform how they think. And as I, I, I almost caused a riot inside the jail when I had taught all these inmates. I had done it like, I don't know, probably 15 times. And now the, the course was like uh, eight hours long and it took me two days to deliver it. And every time I would come to the town to do this, again, hoping to see them as patients, but not having all the paperwork and stuff done. So we would do education. And the whole jail, <laughs> every inmate would sign up for this. It was the fourth time I'd taught it to them. They should know all the answers, but they were so hungry to, how do you really change a brain uh, that's struggling? And how do you connect with somebody when all you've, when your coping skill has been alcohol in that case? And I will contend that I did not plan for this, but um, in a community where 40% alcohol really does hijack your uh, community, the inmates all have alcoholism and um, they're related to the people that are running the jail. So it's their cousin or their brother-in-law who's the jailer. And so they would have these discussions that this doctor had just given this lecture and I know that what you're doing isn't gonna work because this is how you shut your brain down at night. Uh, and as I, as I did that, there was actually nearly a coup inside the jail because I had educated all the inmates, but the staff had not been educated. Anyway, a very entertaining moment where the warden calls me on my way home from one of the seminars and says, you, you need to come back for mandatory training. And I thought he was talking, I needed training. And he's like, no, you need to do this for all of my staff because we, we are on the verge of a riot because there's an argument going on between the inmates and what they've been taught and the staff and what they've been taught. Anyway, the purpose of the story is to say, at this point, I realized I don't think my children, the people that I care about the most, know this information. And so as I was contracted to help with the, the, the leaders of that uh, jail and then the public safety uh, teams and then the teachers and then the preachers in town, I came back and gave that lecture, that 12-hour lecture, probably 15 times to that community. And I talked my children into that I needed a, an assistant. I needed an assistant to advance the slides in this 12 hour, you know, 10 to 12 hour presentation. And of course I didn't need help advancing the slides, but I wanted them to sit in on this presentation and enjoy what happens when uh, people who do not understand how to heal a brain learned that. 
And as I sat with my family this weekend, sometimes in a moment of discomfort because I had overeaten so much, what I was able to take away was how much my family had grown to love being together. Uh, we, have this, uh, we have this tradition of playing board games. Um, anybody raising teenagers, I highly recommend this. And as you look towards the holiday season, I'll give you some of my recommends for the best board games to play. Um, but if you've ever tried to play a board game with a teenager that doesn't know how to play, sometimes they don't, they show up and they do as they're told if they're good kids, but you want them engaging. So we turned this into the only way you get an allowance is we're going to play a board game for $100 and whoever wins the game gets the $100. And of course, my husband and I are just really adamant that if either of us win, then the money stays in our pot. So we do our best to, to collaborate and the children collaborate against us and sometimes split the pot. But the beauty was how much pleasure they got from being around one another. And as much as I have screwed up taking pleasure and joy from food and doing it for many years before I really conquered that. Uh, and I conquered it by teaching other people, by showing, studying what it is they were doing wrong, applying it to my own life, and then teaching it in a way that they could improve their, their brains and their life. And as I looked across um, not just that community that was struggling with addiction, but the community my children were in, this content became my life's best work. And it wasn't until um, I got hired by the Department of Defense to give that 12-hour workshop to the soldiers and the leaders of their communities to, that I, I really took a sense that of uh, pride is the right word, but that's a little boastful, uh, that it was such a transition for how well uh, the unknowing approach to their their addiction, their life, their injured brain had changed um, from the beginning of that course to the end of that course. And I, I need to, with, with humility, say that had it not been for the inmates sitting still and letting me practice uh, how to get that through to, I mean, they probably didn't want to learn about their brain any more than most people do, but they were sober, they were had an undivided attention, and they showed up because, I don't know, that, it was more entertaining than what was going on in the rest of the jail, which I suppose isn't saying much, but what, had, what, had, what came out of that was a well-crafted um, summary of what I've been learning about human brains over the last 20 years. And so when, what does this have to do about your holidays? It is that there are some major transitions that I've made in the last five years. And I wish, I wish I had started this earlier, but I think you got to go through the struggles before you can appreciate what uh, what your gifts are and what God has asked you to honor in, in your service to the community and to, to, my, um, to my life. And that is teaching others about their brains. Uh, I know that many of you have uh, seen that this is the second time that I've offered this Brains of Addiction course. Uh, the first time I did it was um, in the spring of last year. And I want to show you something that I did not... Um, let me do this and here. Uh, this, this course, uh, it's called Brains from Trauma to Repair, that's what I call it, um, is one of the, uh, so if you go into the Dr. Boz sh and you push on the, the review button, you can see that there are several people that have written a review. But I want to read you what this 85-year-old said. I mean, I, I almost, I don't know if I can do it without crying because it really changed. Here's this man who who loved what I was teaching him about keto. And he's in his 80s, okay? This is the, the golden season. This is, he's, he's got what he's got. Uh, you know, improving his brain is going to be difficult because of his age. Now, not without help, but um, he, he called me and said, I'd like, to, I'd like to honor what you've done for me. And I said, you know, Mr. Metcalf, the best thing you can do is there's this really awesome course that that I know I was meant to teach. And you might not have any reason that you want to buy this course, but if you buy this course and you share it with your church group or you share it with your family, it will do more good than any amount of gifted donation you could give me. And so he reluctantly said, okay, we'll do it. 
And this is what he wrote after, this, after he took the course. I found that many persons who should take this course are those who think that it doesn't apply to them. I was in that group. Others who have suffered with trauma will know that this applies to them. But I found from the very first module to the last that both groups have brains that need help. It begins with the understanding of the brain that actually cleans itself at night. And he goes on to talk about several of the, the things that he, uh, that he really appreciated. And I found the course to be an inspiration and an important educational experience for the reader. And what this links to for tonight's show is Mr. Metcalf's greatest blessing is that he was able to take that course, share it with his family, share it with his youth group, and transform the other people around him by having a level of engagement that is far beyond uh, what a holiday party should have been, which is these superficial relationships that we celebrate. We almost use food as the distraction. And that can be true with family. And as I sat around the table this past week, knowing that I was launching this brains course, which always makes me nervous. It makes me nervous because it's, it's so important to me that I, I worry, will I be able to find the people who can take this information and transform their world? That's what I'm looking for that they take the course and they split it 10 ways by, in their support group and they all get to benefit from this information. And maybe one of those people is a counselor in a community that struggles. Or maybe one of those people is a third grade teacher that knows that if you could teach kids about what happens to their hippocampus when they use marijuana, it, it changes them. It changes how they look at what the choices are that come to them in middle school and beyond. And I might have manipulated my sons to sit there for those, that clicking of the, of the slides. And one actually was inside a jail. And to sign the paperwork, I mean, I practically had to give him away for him to have the right to come into that jail and just move the clicker. But by sharing the information with them, it became a, a true different trajectory that their lives were on because they knew information that now they're in college, two of the three of them are in college, the other one's a sophomore in high school, and I got to hear the stories of the people that, gosh, mom, there's so many drugs at school. Gosh, mom, you can't believe how often people um, go to school, go to class high. And as I look at the gift that I would like to share with you for the holiday season, uh, this course is on sale again for the next week, and I encourage you uh, to buy it and share it with the people you love. Uh, it will change the way your holiday season uh, improves not just your brain, but the relationships you have with the next generation and those people that have no idea that the reason they can't sleep all the way through the night has to do with their brain. And you can try to put ketones in their circulation, and that's going to improve things a little. But without the information of truly improving their brain, it is a minor plateau for where they need to launch towards for a complete recovery of their brains. So number one was eat that high fatty meat before you walk in. Number two was to use some ketones in circulation, whether it's in your alcoholic drink or before you drink or sipping on some water as you walk around. But the third reason, uh, the third hack that I have is to truly look away from the food and find those moments uh, where you can engage in education or engage in something that truly changes the trajectory of how you look at the person that you love. And obviously that's probably not a place that you do at your work unless you are a court service officer or police officer or social worker. But with your family, I hope you give the gift to your kids and your grandkids that I got to give to my sons. Uh, it was the greatest blessing over my Thanksgiving holiday. Now Christmas, I hope I do not binge that hard <laughs> on carbohydrates. All right, let's get, uh, I haven't had any, hardly any of my ketones as I drink. Um, oh, so let me follow up with one thing before I go away and tell you my board games recommend. Mm. Okay, so you're going to want to write this down. Number one best board game that we play as a family. We started when the kids were like in first grade. And we played every Sunday after church. And uh, so if you've got littler to, to, and we played it all the way through high school. Like we did not change the board game until this last year. Number one board game was Settlers of Catan. Uh, not only do they learn how to barter and trade, but um, 
okay, I'll, I'll do this little rift because I love this. Um, the psychology of why board games matter are because it condenses behavior uh, into the board game. So this is never better demonstrated when than when you get crazy Uncle Joe playing Pinochle with you and he can't stop table talking. He totally cheats. Uh, and it also represents what he does in life too. He doesn't, he can't restrain. And as a mom, as parents, you want to show that to your kids that there are things that we say, you know, be honest, have, have that, you know, that trustworthy approach in life. And that sounds very noble, but you can totally see it play out that you shouldn't pout. You shouldn't complain. You shouldn't be snarky. You know, those things sound like, okay, you can't teach those to teenagers. You just have to demonstrate what happens when they do that. And there is nothing like a board game to bring out behavior that you as the parent do not need to teach. Everybody else at the board game will say, look at how ornery he's being because he's losing. And it's just a game, but it's an excellent place to, to play out. Why do we play board games? Why have they stuck around for generations? And what is the benefit of them? It forces you to like condense disappointment and regret and envy and uh, greed all in one moment because you got to have some of all that to win the game and you're you want to win the game it's actually it's the competition is very healthy and then it's just a game so it's a place to practice behavior anyway so that's the psychology of why i'm adamant that sit your teenagers down take the time to play uh, do not let the rest of the world overrun it and for sure keep yeah you can have food but Food is not the answer. It's the game that matters. So the second one is um, uh, Ticket to Ride is actually a really good one if you if you want a quick game. Uh, I love that one for, fa it's faster. I'm totally thinking, oh, and the last one is Seven Wonders. So Seven Wonders is, it's another strategy game. So the first few times you play it, I mean, it's a little confusing it the first time you play it, but the second time you play it, you think you have this figured out. But the complexity that you can you can grow as you play the game, it's it's a wonderful game that even if it's the hundredth time I've played that, I find the simplicity yet a true sense of accomplishment when I win. <laughs> like you don't it, there's a lot a little luck, but there's some strategy that says you got to keep track of a few things as you do this. Uh, so Seven Wonders is the third. So those are the top three: Settlers of Catan, Ticket to Ride, and Seven Wonders. Uh, and um, all ages can play. Uh, the best part about settlers is how much you have to you have to trade and collaborate, and you have to you have to be generous while protective. And I just think my husband is brilliant at this, and I'm I'm a little too greedy, <laughs> so he wins most of the time. <laughs> all right, let's see if we got some questions out there. I do really appreciate. Oh, so I want to make sure that you know that the way you buy you, you do sign up for the course is. It runs out next week. I start the live one-on-one um, -on -one con or the consultations that um, uh, folks who have bought the course uh, will get to share their cases with me and I will teach um, the whole class through their, the cases that w are willing to present their stories. Um, it was the best part about the class before. I mean, the content is amazing and that will carry on and I, I hope that it is replicated hundreds of times uh, for anyone who buys it. It is priced to make sure that you do not do it alone, that you share it with someone. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, are the leaders who are willing to bravely say, don't keep this information to yourself. Purchase this in the event that your community will improve. Uh, I mean, I get paid quite a handsome sum to go give this conference live, uh, and I love it. But uh, the best part about what the online course does is it takes that same, um, each, each module is a puzzle, so you don't have to do the whole thing at once. In fact, I recommend you do one module a week as a group. Um, but as a family, you could just click on the hippocampus module and do that as a family and teach your sixth grader, um, teach your nephew why that's so important. And that would be, um, oh, somebody just said Scrabble. That's another really good one, but my family hates me playing Scrabble. I love it. No, I've had to go to online because nobody wants to play with me. I, I win every time, <laughs> like every time. Mm -hmm. mm. Anyway, all right, so let's go to your questions. Um, here we go. And I'm pushing here. No, not working. This one, here we go. 
All right, so November 30th. So again, the, the places for these questions are that you've typed them in in the message chat and my team is kind of sorting to see can we have um, some uh, answers to this. So um, is there an A1C package? You know, it is something I've actually looked into. The Okay, so let, let's start with Natasha's because I, I want to get to the A1C because that's a great question. I'm totally new to keto, the keto diet. Where should I start as a beginner? Okay. Oh, Natasha, I love you. That's a great question. I get this a lot. Um, number one, if I had to tell people one thing to purchase, um, it would be to watch those beginners playlists that are on YouTube that are free. But I would go to my website and get this um, beginner's guide, which is a... It has three things in it. It has this. I actually go to, hold on. I have another. Let me, let me be professional about this. Uh, all right. It has this, which is the food guide. But on the back of it has uh, the keto continuum. Um, and then there's a little booklet, which is, I had one sitting here. I bet you it's not here. Oh, no, this one's right there. Uh, this little booklet, which is... Uh, the 20, it's like the basic rules of keto. Because keto is not difficult, it's just weird. Uh, so when you're trying to figure it out, you're like, what the heck do I eat? And I've had people write in and saying, scolding me, saying, why don't you write a food guide? And I'm like, because it changes. Uh, so that the whole point of what uh, this food guide is, and it's on the fridge guide as well as this booklet, is I start out with a good, better, good, better, best. And it it really organizes several things. Good, better, best for what, how do you check a ketone? Do you need to check a ketone? Um, what do you look for tips on um, uh, measuring your the, the time of when you eat and what you eat? And then I kind of break it up into, well, what's the best red meat? What's the best vegetables? What's the best fats? What's the best alcohol? And again, it goes from good to better to best. And I don't want you to start at best because that does set you up for failure. We want 20 total carbs or less. Um, the online course goes through this very specifically, but that's a good investment. That's almost you know, $500 unless you get uh, in on the bonus sections, which is about $300. This is like $25, this whole kit. And with that playlist and this guide, you could be good to go for weeks on end. I mean, maybe even months before you need any extra help. And that process of going from good to better to best uh, is that's the graduation that I see in people who not just go keto but they go keto and they stay keto. Um, we expect you to fall off that's not unheard of uh, but we also know that a circle of support gets you from dabbling into keto to our hardcore folks that show up at this show. <laughs> I'm glad to see you at the show. All right, so let's go to good question over here. Um, so great question. Next one is, is there an A1C package? I actually have a video that I'm working on for hemoglobin A1C. I don't know, at this rate it's gonna air in February, but it's a great understanding of why that number matters. So as I was looking at that, I wanted a hemoglobin A1C kit for my office. Oh dang, those things are spendy. So then I thought, well, what are the point of care ones? Meaning, can you prick your finger and know your A1C? Yes, you can, but dang, that's really expensive too. So I don't, I have a few, if you go into my, um, I know it's in the course that I link them to a A1C kit that's on uh, Amazon, but I'd be careful. <laughs> it's really hard uh, uh, to, to not, because when you buy an A1C package, you got to buy several of them, and then you need to use them within a certain amount of time. So there's, a, there's an easy way to lose your money when looking at A1C, and it is important. There are several places in clinics where, you should, I mean, when people come to my clinic, I will buy one, I will purchase one, but I, I hadn't looked into them for many years, and now that I've kind of settled in here, I was looking at the price, and they're, they are expensive, but they're valuable. So not point-of-care ones that are really perfect. They're all pretty spendy. But um, I'm definitely keeping an eye out for that. Um, all right, so next one is kidney magnesium question. My creatinine clearance level is 90, and I fluctuate with my uh, EGFR between 50 and 59. So I have to be a little cautious regarding my kidneys. In the warning sections of milk magnesia, it says, ask a doctor. Okay, I can't give medical advice here. 
but I would also tell you that kidney disease has some parameters. Um, I, okay, I'll give you a little bit of insight to where this is gonna lead without giving you medical advice. My dad died of kidney failure. He died with kidney failure. Um, his kidneys did not work for five years before he died. Uh, they slowly went down and we did a lot of things. Keto dramatically lengthened the, the life of his kidneys. Uh, as I um, look at the, the best advice that he had, it was lowering that blood sugar and keeping uh, it stable. Um, as you look at some of the other places that he did run into trouble, it was regulating some of these electrolytes. Now, he didn't run into trouble until he got way down to that 22% of his kidneys were left, 20% of his kidneys were left, 18% of his kidneys were left, and then he got on dialysis when there was about 16% of his kidneys left. That is a different story. Uh, on the way to that, the most important part is you're watching your blood pressure, uh, that you're not having um, a depri deprivity, like to deprive the body from minerals really s shuts down some of those um, receptors and regulators of minerals that should be active and functioning every day. You should give them a workout. I don't mean overload them. I mean give them enough of a workout that you um, transition into uh, a time where adding salt doesn't cause you to have swelling in your lower legs. And that's not something that when you've, when you've denied salt for a long time, you're not churning salt. Well, what churns the salt? Your kidney churns the salt. Uh, so having that in your diet isn't, isn't faux pas. That's not the negative. You want to have this in there. Doing it with the help of your doctor is a good idea though. So that's not medical advice. That's just me saying how, how I approach that. All righty. Let's see here. <laughs> okay. So I've had this question before. Let me go there. Uh, All right, says, John says, Dr. Boz, why does cold brew coffee have carbs? My favorite uh, chameleon organic lists four carbs. So does that break my fast? <laughs> okay, so first of all, I have actually written in to um, one of my favorite uh, carb counters. So the gal who's new and wants to know what, what other things I recommend, there's a free app called a chronometer app, which is the most accurate counter of carbs. It is free, but it is the best resource for having actually check the data that's in their mega database. Uh, I mean, a human checked it. It wasn't just an algorithm. And you'll see that coffee has these carbs in it. So I was irritated by that too. And so I get all the way up to the higher levels of chronometer and said, what in the world do you put carbs in this coffee for? How do you get carbs in this coffee? And they said, well, uh, we had to count it because the the skin of the coffee bean the shuck the, the you know, i would call it the ch the chaff the um of the grain um, when it flakes off it is carbohydrates so if it's not filtered well it can't have carbs in it all right the punchline is i don't count those <laughs> heck no uh, first of all i filter my coffee there's no there's no uh skin of the coffee bean floating around my coffee and especially if it's a good cold brew, it tastes awesome. So no, it doesn't break your fast. I do that all the time. I add, I add salt to my coffee. And um, I think it's a great question. And I've been asked that several times. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do this one last question. Um, let's go over here and click on this. Um, all right. Uh, so Trish says, can you take 90 day average of blood sugar and use as a conversion chart? Um, only if you, I think you're asking about hemoglobin A1C. Uh, you, you really do have to have a continuous glucose monitor to do that. So if you're just checking point of care a few times a week, um, or maybe even a three or four times a day, it is not going to measure the most critical time to measure that blood sugar in someone, which is within the the two hours after they eat. Uh, and I mean that they need to 
some people it's six hours uh, after they eat um, but they can't um, they, they don't appreciate how high the sugar got after they ate and then how long it stayed elevated that is a very high that's a very sensitive sign of insulin resistance is the peak and then that um, sometimes the crash but then the, the where it the nadir really comes within the hours after uh, a, uh, a, uh, a meal so 90 day average you got to have a continuous glucose monitor to do that so it doesn't really work for that um, all right so then lisa says i have a son who often says that I need balance, <laughs> uh, eat everything, and that should be uh, everything that should be grown. He feels like leaving so many foods out isn't healthy. Um, I would tell you that um, it's not. That's not advice of nutrition. Um, there are some very clear. You know, it's great, Lisa. That 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 conversation has come up before as well, and I know that. Um, the 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 well balanced diet is it's a great tagline, um, but it truthfully doesn't it doesn't reflect what our human civilization has evolved eating. Um, we now have this beautiful tapestry of food that we have access to, but it isn't the core essentials for what our body needs. Uh, if you're looking to age well, it is not about a well balanced diet. It is about a properly selected diet of the essential foods and carbohydrates are not essential. That there are some key things that are not very um, popular that I do recommend. Uh, so when he tells you to have a well-balanced food, get him to eat a can of sardines that has incredible nourishment in it within four bites. Ha have him eat liver with you. Uh, the vitamin C in that is awesome, and if you look at the traditions of uh, of our ra of the human race, um, that animal was slaughtered and given to the women, the childbearing women, and the children because of the nourishment and how important it was to take their bodies to uh, that proper development and health. Uh, we have made it a, a great campaign slogan to be well balanced in our in our. 21st century um, privileged life, but it doesn't equate to healthy. Um, a better way to measure their health is simply a waistline and blood pressure, uh, is um, how well they sleep at night and do they get eight hours. Those are other places where I strongly recommend that it's not a, uh, it's not a place where well-balanced ever should have been introduced. Um, all right, I'm going to check my my numbers here and then um, we will call it a night. Uh, I do have a few things that um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who did wish me a happy 50th birthday. I have some really exciting goals that I, I am going to review with my my team is flying in and we're doing a company retreat um, over the next week and I'm just I feel so privileged to be uh, working with a team of people that want to help others the way the way I've been trying to add helping others to my, uh, you know, to my, you could say company mission statement, but those are overrated. I'm checking my number here. This is the, the ketones, counting down, and this is the glucose. That as I look at um, one of the goals for the next year, uh, so yeah, the ketones went down down to 2.4. It doesn't surprise me. I thought that 3.3 was really high. Um, so I, I burned through some of those this hour, and my ketone, my glucose was 70, so that gets to what, about a Dr. Bell's ratio around 30 or so. Um, so again, not a bad number for a 48-hour fast. Uh, for those of you that out there that are looking, that have written in and said, are you going to take patients next year? Uh, yes, I finally think I get to return to seeing patients. Uh, I will look at those who have invested in the purchase of that online course, those who have studied what I've, I've offered already uh, as the first people that I invite into my clinic. And there's a lot of things I'm doing, so I'm trying not to uh, overpromise how that rollout is going to go. Um, setting up the practice here in Tampa has just been more difficult than, uh, not, not as in the tasks are too heavy, it's that there's so many other things that were going on in my life, in my company, 
and um, I I'm just feel very blessed for all of you that are with me. If you are watching this on replay, uh, I do encourage you that to click on the link and check out that sales page for the online course, uh, Brains from Trauma to Repair, that the course will always be open, but what you get if you buy within the next week is that you get time with me in a class and showing how I help the brains of people around me uh, and those in my clinic. You'll also get to be on that list to invite into my practice over the next year, and I really look forward to that season coming back into my life. I'm signing off as Dr. Vaz. We are here on the channel reversing those health problems one ketone at a time. I will see you next week, everybody, and say a big prayer for my team as we have our retreat this week. So.